So Zombicide Invader, it's not just zombies in space, although it is kind of zombies in space. There are a number of new innovations and metrics introduced into this game. So it's not quite just a reskin of miniatures on that core Zombicide Modern experience, as we've seen with Modern, followed by Green Horde, followed by Black Plague, followed by Invader. There's this opportunity to not only really take the core rules, which work, they're a little bit light to dice chucker. It is what it is. It does exactly what it says on the box, but add in a unique twist. And one of the unique twists that I want to explore in this vlog is the idea of mold and, and how this changes a very familiar game. If you consider yourself a zombie side master, uh, much like I consider myself, a lot of time playing modern more time playing Black Plague, I felt pretty confident going into Invader. And of course, the first mission or two, it's kind of a trainer mission on there, an intro mission. But as soon as you dive into the medium and higher level missions, things start to get really tactically interesting on here. So I want to push out my experience with that, add it to the arsenal, get it up to the podcast archives here, talk about it over on my blog, and then turn it over to you, fellow invader, my fellow invader enthusiasts. So really quick, there's this idea of mold. And if you're familiar with Black Plague, this is kind of an extension of the necromancers and, and how they work, a re-implementation of it. What you have on certain corners, and of course it's going to be a little bit different depending on the mission, on certain corners of the table, near a spawn point, actually a spawn point on the table, potentially, you have a mold token. It's either active or passive. Set out, again, depending on the mission, at different points on the board is also going to be a mold spot. Uh, corruption or a hive nest, something in the narrative that's essentially generating Xenos on there. There's an active side, a passive side. Active side means that it's affected by spawn cards and abominations and other things. Passive side means you've destroyed it. It's no longer in play. The first thing that's really interesting is the idea of corruption. In that anything in that area, occupying that space, in that room, has literally been turned to mold. Has literally been turned to dust in there. What this means is there's two types of search paradigms in Invader soldier and civilian depending on what your character class is that determines where you can search there's also oxygen rooms and airlocks that you need to get to the outside both equipment and access points on there if mold destroys one of these rooms the properties of the rooms are gone it could cause you to lose a mission um, you need to make it out to the surface and in that part of the building where you are there's only one oxygen room and it gets destroyed you lose the mission on there now that's that's pretty rare but what you do see is certain key rooms depending on how the mold spawns and how the abominations spawn and what's in play it, it really messes things up so it puts this kind of urgency in combating the mold but also searching a new kind of twist on the search paradigm on there the mold um spawned by a mold abomination as it moves it creates mold it literally creates this living chain of mold we first saw this concept in action with the necromancer in black plague the necromancer kind of walks across the board um, creating a potential spawn point and if it makes it to the other end of a spawn point you lose the game right this idea of massive reinforcements that still exists with the mold but where it turns things up really incredibly is based on the deck of the cards that you're using there are places where the mold spawns workers hunters tanks or you know other xenos that you might have in play from some of the expansions so mold points that are behind you as you move through the complex can suddenly become active mold points in front of you can suddenly become active if you're moving through the complex, and some of the maps are very, very big. If there's a mold point behind you that spawns an abomination, um, kind of in traditional zombie side manner, if an abomination is way behind you, then do you really need to engage it, right? You're making your way through the, the city, the complex, modern, whatever it's going to be. You're making it to the exit point. 
you're about halfway there and you say, look, I'm not going to go back to the abomination. It's never going to catch up. But this thing is, is spawning mold as it goes, creating these mold nodes. What that means is if you draw a worker card, you know, spawn five workers or um, hunters are kind of the fast ones, the runner equivalent, you know, spawn four or five hunters on each mold node. And you've got five behind you because you didn't deal with it and you decided to run tactically, which admittedly sometimes is the correct decision to make. That's like, wait, wait, 20 hunters just spawned plus the spawn points plus other things. Oh, you ran out of miniatures, even with the Kickstarter exclusives on there and the expansions. Well, now they double activate. So all of a sudden that wave is coming at you. What I've noticed is through the interaction of these mo- of these mold nodes, the, the stress level, the escalation, the amount of miniatures that pour at you um, is perhaps the most in any game so far and that creates for some really tense moments some really really big tactical missions and some decisions that need to be made for me the bots the sentry guns um the difference between civilians and soldiers all very interesting all very tactical all very unique to the game adds a lot of different little options on there before we even get into the different abominations but the idea of how the mold is more active now that, that really changes the most for me. 